toxic and possessive, two words you never want to hear in connection to a relationship. But when it came to the love story between Abigail White and Bradley Lewis, what other descriptors could be used? The young couple was notorious for their blowout fights. But I don't believe a word that comes out of that boy's mouth. I have to live in daylights or out of him for him to tell me the truth, and he still don't tell me the truth. Rumors of infidelity and taking their relationship problems online. But I'm not just saying it because you think like you say I'm fat. Yet, even their reputation as an unhealthy match couldn't prepare those who knew the couple best for the unfathomable lengths that one person would go to in the heat of the moment. Being you're talking to you today is something that you never expect to happen to your family. But can an act so heinous just happen? Or were the events of March 25th, 2022 foreshadowed in the months and weeks before the crime was committed? People are generally saying to me, one of you are going to end up. Some relationships end in marriage, some end in tears, and others, well, they meet a more gruesome conclusion. But when it came to Abigail White, the South Gloucestershire woman just couldn't see a future without Bradley Lewis by her side. In fact, her two prior relationships paled in comparison to what she developed with Bradley over their years together, real love. In the early days of their romance, Bradley was a humble floor layer, and Abigail, opting out of the traditional 9 to 5, made her income through OF. Under the name Mitzi Lewis, Abigail became known as the platform's fake Barbie and was able to rake in 50,000 euros her first year. However, that income later leveled out to about 1,000 euros a month. And after Abigail fell pregnant, her once lucrative career dried up entirely as she stopped releasing content. And much like Abigail's OF venture, her relationship with Bradley also experienced a come down. Sure, Social media painted a charming picture, what with the pair shacking up together, bringing three children into the world, and still taking the time to show virtual displays of affection. But any honeymoon phase was short-lived considering how quickly all illusions of harmony between the two dissolved. See, the couple took on again, off again to new extremes. Bradley ending their relationship over text only for Abigail to threaten to take her own life wasn't just a one-time occurrence, but a habit that always resulted in the same outcome reconciliation. As for the cause of their relationship woes, well, that often traced back to the one almighty destroyer of puppy love romances and marriages alike, infidelity. <laughs> Abigail was constantly angry and suspicious at the prospect of Bradley cheating, and her paranoia wasn't entirely unfounded. It seemed Bradley had a taste for women that weren't his partner, even going so far as to impregnate someone outside of his relationship and allegedly send explicit messages to Abigail's own sister. But were these acts of malice or desperation from a man who was looking for an out? One woman who had an intimate relationship with Bradley recalled him texting her that he wished he was with her as opposed to his partner. And the account of another one of Bradley's paramours could only describe his dynamic with Abigail as toxic. But what was poisoning the relationship? Or perhaps the better question, who? Well. Even Abigail's best friend Sophie Weber admitted the mother of three could be psycho. Abigail was known to threaten not only Bradley's life, but everyone involved with him, from his lovers to his mother. Yet, it was Abigail who described Bradley as the coercive, controlling, and manipulative party in the relationship. And one way she punished the 22-year-old for his behavior was to belittle him on the internet. That's right. While the three videos available on Bradley's TikTok account were about family life, Abigail's account was full of videos that aired out the dirty laundry and toxic tendencies of their relationship as playful anecdotes. But I'm not just saying it because you think like you say I'm fat. No, at all. But you said it's made for another. Mum's life. I'm mother's life. I'm not saying you're fat at all. And true, some videos Abigail posted appeared to be in jest, such as her telling Bradley she was going out for a jog and instead meeting up with girlfriends. However, others weren't so jovial, unless you consider her partner to be a punchline. Abigail seemed to toy with Bradley for amusement, playing a Tinder notification to test his reaction. <laughs> and even calling him out by name in another upload, writing, We all know a d called Brad, lol. It was clear there were no boundaries in Abigail and Bradley's relationship. Not when it came to what was posted online, not when it came to infidelity, and not when it came to control. On February 7th, Abigail sent a message to her partner that read, I swear to God, I'll s you. And in case she wasn't clear enough, Abigail made her next text even more specific. I'm going to s you in your f now. 
But were these just empty threats or promises? The couple had also started living separately. Abigail remained at the family home on Chipperfield Drive in Kingswood, and Bradley lived with his mother. Of course, this separate living wasn't so much a choice as a demand from social services that required them to live apart due to troubles between them. But what was the crux of their issues? Well, it seemed Abigail wasn't just affected by the toxic relationship patterns she grew up with. She was reliving them. See, Abigail grew up in a household where DB was normalized through the physical altercations between her parents. This was how two people showed their love to each other, or at least it was until her parents separated when Abigail was four years old. Unfortunately, the end of her caregiver's relationship together didn't signal an end to the dysfunction in Abigail's life. According to a TikTok posted by Abigail, her new stepfather allegedly s ate her when she was 11 years old, a trauma Brad appeared to be supporting her through, commenting on the video, You've got through it so strong. After the alleged mistreatment, Abigail's childhood was uprooted time and time again, from stays with her father who suffered with alcoholism, moving in with her grandmother, and eventually winding up in the foster system, where she was placed with two different families before moving into a hostel. Of course, Abigail didn't go unaffected by this chaos. Her schooling suffered. She was put on antidepressants. She even experimented with illegal substances. And whether it was her upbringing or a genetic predisposition, Abigail left her turbulent childhood with a mental souvenir, borderline personality disorder. Borderline personality disorder, or BPD, is a mental health disorder that Abigail openly dealt with, even joking on TikTok about coming off of her medication and having a bad episode. Parts of Abigail's personality, her low moods, her inappropriate intense anger, and her recklessness could be attributed to or heightened by BPD, a disorder known to cause unstable emotions. Doctors were in broad agreement that the 24-year-old met the criteria of BPD. It was just a question of whether this disorder played a part in what Abigail did next. See, as the rocky patches in Abigail and Bradley's love story became harder to navigate, the mother of three's actions had become increasingly rash. And on March 19, 2022, fueled by rage after Bradley had cheated on her with two women, Abigail struck her partner with a blade. A wound Brad claimed was a football injury when he visited the clinic. For Abigail's part, she alleged Bradley had first struck her for crying loudly in bed after recovering from a terminated pregnancy. However, in text conversations between the two, Bradley denied his part in the altercation and said he didn't know what to do anymore and was petrified of Abigail. But it wasn't just the injury that pained Bradley in the following days. It was learning that Abigail had also been unfaithful. And, according to Abigail, it was more than once. A message from Bradley implied Abigail's disloyalty hadn't just hurt him, but killed his heart. A line that would soon seem all too prophetic. But Abigail and Bradley's hot and cold relationship didn't end there. The next days consisted of exchanged I love yous and I'm done texts from Abigail, and then more declarations of adoration mixed with hate. Yet behind those conversations, Abigail was plagued by disturbing thoughts. On March 21st, 2022, the 24-year-old confided in her friend Sophie that she was contemplating taking her own life but couldn't, if only for her kids and Brad. And on March 24th, voice notes recorded by Abigail suggested it wasn't just herself she was threatening to take out. People are generally saying to me, one of you are going to end up dead. Like, and I fully believe that I'm quite capable of killing him if he hurts me again, or I'm going to end up being in prison. Abigail reasoned that physical force was a necessary evil, as it was the only thing Bradley responded to. I have to live in daylight all out of him for him to tell me the truth, and he still doesn't tell me the truth. He only tells me the truth when he thinks I'm gonna him. Like when I get out, like when I him. Tensions were escalating all right, but nobody knew how far Abigail would go. Obviously, I have no limit when I get angry. The terminated pregnancy, the philandering, and no doubt the constant ups and downs of her relationship had left Abigail, someone who already had difficulty controlling her emotions, stressed. And all of these feelings, the anger, the betrayal, and perhaps a twisted sort of enduring love culminated into one explosive day, March 25th, 2022. Chantel Rostol, a woman who was familiar with Bradley and his family, overheard something strange when she passed the 22-year-old and his partner on the street that day. Do you think I'm stupid like I don't know? She recalled hearing Abigail ask Bradley. Had Chantel intruded on a lover's quarrel or something more? Well, Abigail's texts from that day, although disturbing, were no different from her past messages to her partner. She said she was breaking up with Brad, accused him of cheating, and threatened to harm his mother. 
you know, the usual. And Abigail's TikTok was in line with her past posts, with an upload on March 25th that again used Bradley as the butt of a joke. Me with his homeboy when I found out he cheats. But there was someone who could provide more insight into what exactly transpired that day. Louise Silk, a friend of Abigail's. Louise had borne witness to an uncomfortable scene when she accompanied Abigail to the park to meet Bradley. It was here that Bradley told Abigail, I don't want to be with you anymore, Abby. After that statement, the three stewed in awkward silence. Still, never one to let a breakup end her relationship, Abigail invited Bradley to join herself, Louise, and Louise's boyfriend Ryan at the Horseshoe Pub. However, when Abigail, Louise, and Ryan arrived at the pub a little after 5 p.m., Bradley was nowhere to be seen. Ryan recalled that either he or Abigail rang Bradley, but it was only Abigail's anger that was palpable when Bradley picked up and Abby loudly asked where he was. It wasn't until 6.48 p.m. that Bradley finally arrived, and Abigail was not pleased with his tardiness. She allegedly demanded to speak to him, but Ryan suggested Abigail calm down so they could order food. Yet calm down, Abigail did not. Instead, she went to the pub restroom with Louise and told her friend she believed Bradley was cheating. Louise recalled Abigail's state as emotional and angry. Mirroring this, Bradley also called Ryan into the men's restroom at some point that night and was visibly upset and crying. He confided in his friend that he was frightened of Abigail and wanted out of the relationship, but was scared that if he permanently ended their romance, she would react by permanently ending her life. When they returned to their table, it became clear the girls' chat had not lightened Abigail's mood. No, Abigail proceeded to make a scene, causing harm to Bradley, Ryan, and a random patron, who returned the favor, causing Abigail to fall to the floor. An incident Abigail then reported to police. And with that performance, it seemed any hope to salvage the night out was lost. Ryan and Louise bid their adieus. At 7.50 p.m., Abigail and Bradley hitched a ride to Abigail's place with a patron from the bar, Alfie Pike, a man who heard one statement he'll have a hard time scrubbing from his memory. I'm unalive when I get home, Bradley had told Alfie. Hyperbole, surely. But still, Bradley's words stuck with Alfie enough that he offered the 22-year-old his number in case he needed to reach out. However, after they were dropped off, it was Abigail who made a call. And it wasn't to Alfie. At 8.07 p.m., Less than 20 minutes after leaving the pub, an emergency call was made on Abigail's phone. But when operators answered, there was only silence on the other line. Had Abigail mistakenly redialed emergency after reporting the incident at the pub earlier? Well, from the screams neighbor Laura Cundy heard emanating from a home on Chipperfield Drive that night, it seemed there was no such luck. Carefully, Laura listened and was able to make out the words of a distraught Abigail White screaming that she couldn't get through to the emergency services and, oh yeah, one other thing he can't breathe. The neighbor called 999 and made her way to Abigail's home, where upon entering the kitchen, she found a floor stained crimson, a hysterical Abigail, and an extremely pale and unresponsive Bradley lying on his back. Laura believed the 22-year-old had passed away, but then she spotted his shallow breaths. Brad was still alive, if just barely. Still on the phone with emergency, Laura attempted first aid on Bradley as per their instructions pressing on the wound and counting his breaths. In these moments, Bradley's life was hanging in the balance. But how had a young man that was living and breathing less than 20 minutes earlier found himself in this state? It seemed Bradley had taken a blade and ended his own life. At least, this is what Abigail told Laura Cundy. But the neighbor couldn't help noticing the mop head soaking in the sink, Abigail's mismatched shoes, and the blade, stained up to seven centimeters, sitting on the radiator. Was Abigail telling the whole story? Then there were those chilling three words said by one of Abigail and Bradley's kids that cut through the chaos of the gruesome scene. Mummy did it. When the paramedics arrived, Bradley was rushed to the hospital, but tragically, nothing could be done to save him. A post-mortem evaluation revealed the cause of the 22-year-old's passing was a wound to his chest that had reached his heart, at least seven centimeters deep. And while Abigail was adamant the injury was self-inflicted, she was arrested under the suspicion of ending her partner's life. During her interview with police, the now single mother provided more details of what exactly happened on the fateful night of March 25th. She claimed that things had become heated when they got back home, but it was Bradley who escalated the argument by reaching for the kitchen blade. Abigail, fearing Bradley was going to harm himself, had merely stepped in to take the blade from him. She claimed her intention was to throw the blade outside. However, Bradley rushed after her, and when he finally caught up with Abigail, well, he took her hand that held the blade to make contact with his chest. It was an unbelievable sequence of events, and it seemed even Abigail had a tough time buying into her own narrative because three months later, her story changed. 
On July 7, 2022, the mother of three pleaded guilty to manslaughter. Abigail admitted she was the one who left Bradley mortally injured. And in her newfound spirit of transparency, Abigail was ready to reveal what really happened on March 25th, or at least what she claimed really happened. Abigail alleged she was tipsy when she left the pub, but not overly inebriated or affected by an illegal substance. She admitted they had argued on the drive home and accepted Bradley said, I'm unalive when I get home. She believed Bradley wasn't predicting his fate so much as he was forecasting the unpleasant mood Abigail would be in once they were alone. And he was right. At the house, they argued loudly. Abigail was upset that Bradley hadn't stuck up for her at the pub, while Bradley thought she was overreacting. At one point, Abigail alleged Bradley laid hands on her a bit in the hallway. Next thing you know, Abigail was on her way to the kitchen, where she noticed the blade. And now we get to the part of Abigail's story that provided the question a jury at the British Crown Court now had the responsibility to answer. Did Abigail intend to end Bradley's life that night? The 24-year-old claimed when she grabbed the blade and went over to Bradley, her only intention was to scare him. In fact, it wasn't until she saw Bradley's shocked face that she realized what she had done. It was just over before I even thought, Abigail told the jury. It just happened, she said. When she saw the gory aftermath, she helped Bradley take off his top, walked him to the kitchen, and laid him down. She tried calling an ambulance, but they said they were busy, Abigail claimed. She called again but couldn't get a signal, which is when she started screaming for help. As Abigail was attempting to get help, she said she was also tending to the mess she made, mopping the vital fluid off the floor and putting Bradley's stained shirt in the laundry. She admitted when she spoke to the 999 operator, she told them Bradley had done it to himself. The same thing she told her neighbor, police, and others. But why had she lied? According to Abigail, there was only one reason she hadn't originally told the truth. She was scared. Scared of what coming clean meant for her, her relationship with Bradley, and her children. I wish I told the truth from the beginning, Abigail said. But now that the supposed truth was out, was the jury sold on Abigail's version of events? On October 19th, 2022, after two weeks of hearing from Abigail, witnesses, and those who had known the couple, the jury of six women and four men reached a verdict. Abigail was found guilty of intentionally ending Bradley's life and sentenced by the Honorable Mr. Justice Frazier to life with a minimum term of 18 years. In my judgment, at the time you injured him, you did intend to take his life. You had threatened to do this many times, the judge told Abigail upon sentencing. Your evidence you only wanted to shock him was not credible. As for Bradley's family, well, according to the victim's father, Steve Lewis, a verdict can only provide so much comfort to those now facing their own punishment. I do not feel that we have received justice as we have got ourselves a life sentence. From Steve's perspective, Abigail's actions had condemned him to a life sentence of pain and distress. But even Steve knew his son wouldn't want him to dwell. Brad would now be saying, that's enough now, Dad, just shut up. And my famous saying I reply was, that's my boy talking. And what became of Abigail? Well, just because Bradley's partner is behind bars doesn't mean she's disappeared. In fact, recently, in March 2023, the former OF star made headlines after writing an article for Inside Times that argued in favor of conjugal visits between female inmates and their partners. It has come to my attention, after recently being sentenced to 18 years, that prisons do not facilitate overnight stays for women prisoners and their partners. I think they should take into account and consideration our needs and allow men and women to have overnight stays together, the 24-year-old wrote. Unfortunately for her victim, there will be no updates on Bradley Lewis, whose life has been forever frozen at 22. Still, as a testament to who Brad was in his short life, hundreds came to attend his funeral and memorials throughout South Gloucestershire. He'd do anything for anybody if he could, and that is shown by his popularity. To those who knew him, he will be remembered as a dear friend, a father whose children worshipped him, and a long list of other exemplary attributes. A man to be proud of, loving, thoughtful, loved his family, loved his children, loved, unfortunately, the woman that ended up taking his life. And since these memories of Bradley are all that's left, for those mourning, they will have to be enough. There's no past, no diagnosis, and no final straw that could explain why Abigail did what she did. Obviously, I have no limit when I get angry. Like most destructive acts, the crime was senseless. And now, Bradley's children, family, and loved ones are forced to face what Abigail's wrongdoing took from them. A number of people have been in touch since what's happened to Brad, and those people are still grieving today. 
and that is because of what a popular, thoughtful, helpful person that our son was, and as far as we're concerned, he still is. This is the story of Abigail White, the woman who stole the life of the person she claimed to love most.